Hello all. Happy New Year's. Oh my gosh. Happy New Year and happy 12th day of Yule, which will end at sunset tonight. And yeah, I, it hit me this morning when I was writing in my journal and I wrote out January 1st and it was like 2021. Oh my God, we're here. We're here in 2021. That's kind of funny. It just hit me. Like I went to bed early last night. I think I crawled into bed at like 10.30. <laughs> I just, yeah, kind of felt like, yep, that's what my body is asking for and that's what I need and that's what I get to choose for me. So <laughs> didn't need to, yeah, make it be anything other than what it was and force myself to stay up uh, to bring in the new year or anything. Just decided to take care of me and receive what I needed for me and it was a good night's sleep. and. Yeah, um, actually had yeah a dream that I recalled and uh, looked at this morning as well. And it's part of my continuity and part of this stream that I've been working with and choosing to focus on for me and my healing, my journey, my discovery of me. And yeah, I've received a lot of gifts. Um, just wow, I'm so humbled, awed, grateful wowed by this experience, um, by this opportunity, by these lessons that have been given and offered to me, opportunity and invitation to grow into me, to be more true to me, to show up for me, to honor my life and my energy, um, to claim my power, my responsibility, um, to own myself and claim my sovereignty. And all of that means, all that that means to me, like freedom and responsibility and self-ownership and self-governance and accountability and, um, yeah, showing up fully and being free and receiving this gift that I've been given to be and honoring that in more full, true, whole ways and my part in this whole in and through all my ways and God's ways and love's ways and her life her ways life's ways all the goddess yeah means to me all of we all of this all of she all life all that we be the web of life the circle of continuity the wheel that holds everything the heart um, that is the center of all things and yeah, there's a lot of depth and profoundness in that for me. And um, yeah, that's just where I've been and where I'm at and <laughs> where I want to go, where I'm going. And uh, working with the gifts of forgiveness and release and letting go and observing and acknowledging like the old and the new and linking the two that are one for continuity and for wholeness and fullness and truth. Remembering that truth and remembering who I am, remembering who we are and who we can choose to be for ourselves and for each other and for humanity and for this life and this web that we're a part of and all of these things, yeah, all that we are and all that we want to be all that we get to choose and experience and free. And so, yeah, just thinking about the gifts, the opportunities and the possibilities and the gratitude and the humility and the wisdom gained through experience and insight, hindsight, um, openness and a willingness to see, a willingness to receive, a willingness to allow and let go and just be and uh, reminding me to show up and be myself and be love for myself and be love um, for all the love that I am and the, all the love that's available to me and all the love that I love all the love <laughs> that is me and we all that I love all those I love in relationship with me aligned with a new, true, whole, full relationship with myself, with my true self. 
and that feels pretty good and it's exciting and it's scary and it is bittersweet in a lot of ways allowing the old some of the old to fall away or being willing to release it um, so that love can be free and love is freed yeah love is freed um, with that gift of release releasing with love and clarity releasing with love and a willingness um, to be like true to me and we and so there is something that I read in my last video um, from the forgiving self about being able to mourn our losses and to meet our pain and to acknowledge that pain and release that pain or um, allow ourselves to feel that pain so that gift of pain can show us um, what we need to see or what's asking to be included, reclaimed, or honored and released. And so that's what I've been choosing for me. And yeah, just been receiving the most beautiful gifts and feeling the shift. So I'm grateful for that. And so, yeah, the gifts that have been coming in and through and for us all. Yeah, and there is, yeah, it's a mixed bag. <laughs> yeah, it feels so at this time. And so it's all part of, yeah, the one. And so it's all part of love and the gifts that are being offered, yeah, are so full of love and potent right now <laughs> and always. But yeah, I want to talk a little bit about Twelfth Night um, because that was such a cool, that's such a cool tradition um, of the 12 days of Yule and uh, they used to call it Oath Night because words uh, were and did carry more weight or they were more potent at this time in this cycle of the year and of um, the old and the new, like the old passing away and the new coming through, coming into being. And um, so, yeah, that's when it was a day where they took their oaths and also they would toast um, and thank everyone in their lives for playing different roles and p playing different parts and enriching and contributing to like well-being, um, this community through being like a community and a close, um, yeah, a close community. And so there's nothing more like meaningful to me than like the symbol of the tree. And that was a day that uh, they would celebrate um, the tree of life, Yggdrasil. I don't know how to really pronounce that, but Yggdrasil, the world tree, the tree of immortal life. And like, you know, like, all that holds the connections that were all part of that tree of life and that um, yeah it links the earth and the heavens and yeah we all are that tree of life and we're a part of that grand tree of life and so it just uh, brings up yeah just what does community mean and what does family mean and what does being a part of this whole mean to me and community is to dwell deeply, to dwell deeply with one another, to dwell deeply together. And yeah, that just goes back to the roots, you know, the roots of things and how we're all connected and related and uh, how we're all needed and um, what roles we get to play, you know, in others' lives and for ourselves and um, how we're all needed here and all our gifts are needed here and that's true pros prosperity to share our gifts um, because it's regenerating, regeneration, yeah. And the virtue was luck and prosperity. Yeah, it was like they would wish each other well and good luck and hail, 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 hail means to your health. And uh, wassail means so be well. And so, yeah, I wrote some fun things last night, just in my journal before I went to bed. 
just it was feeling right and it, I was feeling grateful about that and just it was kind of a fun little thing to do and so I want to share just this little thing that I wrote um, hail to our health and a happy new year wassail so be well live a prosperous year well wishes and joy and yuletide cheer hail to your health and all your love always dear <laughs> and you're always loved always dear yeah just little things like that and uh, yeah just a little fun thing and I, I i had texted a friend and told her told her to have a good night and kind of like yeah wrote her a little poem spontaneously like about here's to your health and here's to our well-being and yeah just kind of passing that gratitude on and um, yeah for the friendship I'm grateful for the friendships that I have and the relationships that I have that have taught me so much and the, the teachers that I've had and like yeah knowing and realizing that everyone is a teacher for me and that uh, it reflects my inner teacher as well and so yeah there's some there's some things coming up for me like that are awesome and amazing to help me let go of the old and release and make space for the new for the new life to nourish that new life that is ready to come through and be nurtured and nourished and honored and blessed and thanked and celebrated um, and bless the rest yeah so part of that like is like being willing to mourn some of my losses or yeah, some of the pain that has been undigested or unacknowledged or n not directly confronted or addressed or um, faced in certain ways. And um, yeah, I've been getting so much gold from my dreams and the dreams show me different things. And then, yeah, it hits me in certain ways about like how I can apply like what I'm receiving to what I've been working with and um, what's been coming up for me to address and to look at and to release and to honor and to see into and to look into for me. And so, yeah, that's why I'm grateful for this continuity and for this ability to receive and to respond and to like really cultivate my intimacy and my relationship with me. And um, so I can, yeah, honor that gift that's been given to me and, um, really like operate with integrity and more consciously and just be more aware of where I'm directing my energy and yeah how to create something that's in alignment with what's true for me and how to like yeah cultivate those connections and that responsibility and develop that and honor that and contribute to that well-being to true well-being and so hail to your health and wassail so be well yeah may we all be well and held within this well remembering who we are being loved for all we are yeah just as we are here as we are and all that we are through and for all that we are and so um yeah i've been getting so many things from my dreams and I did look at the, the dream that I had the other day um, yeah and, and it did help me see some things and I'm grateful like for letting go and for forgiveness and for the gift of release so that we can receive the new life that's ready to be born ready to be received and so yeah receptivity so I just wrote like a little bit about um, yeah, at the end of this dream that says uh, it feels very shitty to stay stuck in this blame game and keeping it going is such a damn drain, never ending cycle of suffering until we realize we can choose to see and create another way. And so that's what I've been willing. Yeah, please help me see another way or please show me another way or please show me like what's available and what, um, yeah what will be um, available, you know, 
I'm willing to let go, even though it's bittersweet. Um, sometimes, yeah, some old things need to break, break into two for the third to come through. And so life can be reborn again. Yeah, from that union and separation. And so that's interesting, yeah, too. How, how life, how she, how creation <laughs> creates and how, yeah, regenerates. All these things and continuity um, what I wrote down was I choose love compassion forgiveness empathy and a new way of operating through being fully free I choose freedom and I choose it for me I choose to let go of the need to please or be pleasing and pleased I choose to let go forgive release all of them all others and me I choose freedom in my own sovereignty I choose to forgive and release I allow this to receive and I let go to be freed. Letting go, letting go, letting go feels bright, good and true for me. Choosing love for all of me, choosing love and being free. Releasing all, releasing we, freeing love to be received. Freeing love through freeing me, freeing love through freeing we. Letting go with love for all, letting go with love for all of we. Freeing love for love is free, freeing love so let it be, freeing love authentically, forgiving and receiving. <laughs> Through forgiving all of we, me and thee, all of she, freeing all to be free, free to take our journeys, we are freed. Freeing love so let it be, freeing love with love so be, freeing love my love is freed, freeing me my love is free. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, love, for showing me. Thank you, love, for being with me. Thank you, love, all is free to be, free to be received. So be. Yeah. <laughs> I am willing. And so, yeah, just wrote that down um, yesterday, I think. Or, yeah, it was yesterday. And then just um, kind of continuing um, so I was thinking about the need to be received and how I wanted to be seen and heard, understood, validated, acknowledged, and seen as right and seen as worthy through another's eyes, and how being seen as wrong or not enough or unworthy or unimportant activated my old scripts and programs, lenses of the wound or the emotional pain body, and stories of shame, rejection, pain, blame, resentment, self-pity, disconnection, guilt, and escape. A refusal of me, a rejection story. Not allowed to be fully me, all of me, all my love for all of me. My own being, my, my and thy love for me and we. That is what I choose to be. All my love for all of me, all my love creator has given to me to be. So let it be for all of me and we. I release all others to be free. I release myself from slavery. I claim my power and my sovereignty. And my birthright I claim with faith, love, joy, and humility. So let it be. Yeah, so I had a dream this morning. Yes, this morning. And it showed me some things and it was, yeah, a continual, continuous stream. And it was continuity and it was things that I got to see for me. And um, also, um, yeah, there's something about a gift a gift ceremony that also relates and I'll share that in a moment and it's pretty cool and pretty sweet and so I just wanted to share this little dream and then like kind of what it meant to me and then what I got from it and yeah in certain ways and it helped me with the undigested pain and the unacknowledged like things that I um, was still like working with but kind of like maybe avoiding in a sense um, and confronting or facing. And so, it, yeah, it really did help me with forgiveness, with allowance, with being willing to release and understand and honor and think and bless and release so that love could be freed and love could be honored more fully. And like the relationships that I'm letting go of now um, through love, with love, for love. Yeah, and, and 
in that spirit of love and forgiving and yeah to release release all on their own journeys and release myself to take my own where I get to go and where I get to be like releasing old stories and agendas releasing old hopes and dreams releasing what I wished could be just to make room for what is and what will be and so yeah there's a lot in that and to that and for that like giving and receiving and being and sharing and honoring it all yeah the whole the whole's integrity and so um yeah this little dream i was in a grocery store was i working there i think i was working there i was playing some part <clears throat> so um it seems like there was never ending or uncompleted tasks and um, i kept getting sidetracked and pulled away or distracted or was i avoiding and hiding from something and is it something else or is it just like my wandering like my ego wandering or my um my defense mechanisms or control strategies survival strategies um and my overthinking yeah overthinking what my responsibility is and all of that and it i the messages that i got were discernment is needed and discipline to focus and, and receive clarity and then one of my friends is there and we're looking for some treats in the dream and there are opened bags of muffins lemon blueberry and I'm wondering about either saving these to eat or throwing them away I'm letting letting go or keeping them these half eaten or undigested unclaimed or leftover things it seems like maybe I'm trying to kill time I'm killing time and avoiding what I need or have agreed to. Is it time to renegotiate or simply walk away? Is it ego bargaining or choosing something more in alignment with who I am and who I choose to be? Am I avoiding going to the... Oh, I'm avoiding going to the front of the store, to the register. Does this relate to purchases, debt, or a reluctance to receive what's available? What's being offered or showing up? Am I, am I avoiding... Um, what's being offered or am I avoiding showing up for what I've asked for or agreed to or committed to and then there's um, yeah the anxiety and fear that's coming up and mourning a loss or avoiding what I need uh, avoiding the uncomfortable or what's no longer in alignment and true for me or truly serving me it's an invitation to let go to confront and address to meet and to release to receive to allow and to forgive it seems like there's another male friend there and he's in the bread aisle <clears throat> and says and he says or exchanges a few things with me and he seems happy and focused relaxed and engaged he's just coming for some bread and a few needed groceries for sustenance and nourishment for family and wellness needs and this and other insights from feelings and previous dreams reminds me of the bittersweet feelings of the need and the gift of letting go releasing what I no longer need to carry or hold on to, mourning the losses and forgiving to let go, appreciating the gifts that have been offered, received, thanking, acknowledging, observing, blessing, and letting all go. I am willing. So letting go of what's been, what is, and will be, letting go of old relationships, friendships, and gifts, so new life can grow, bloom, and fruit. Letting go of old hopes, desires, needs, stories, agendas to make room for all of the new. Fully honoring all that's been given and giving them back to let go and move through the new. Being reborn through the space that's been made. Um, through fully honoring the whole, the old and the new ways emerging, coming through. Oh, letting go of the old and the new ways emerging and coming through. With loving intent and a willingness to thank and honor the truth, letting go of old resentments, attachments, and expectations I held for me and others, letting go of old identities, projections, and patterns, and the old wounds. So that's all I have written for today, but there are some things that came up that relate, and um, yeah, um, I was invited to attend a um, yoga like class tonight that 
uh, it's going to be a beautiful little gathering um, with a dear friend um, that I get to see a couple times a year at least. And uh, yeah, as soon as I saw the description of what she was offering and stuff, I was like, yes, that sounds so great. I want to be there for that today. So yes, I'll accept the invitation and I'm, I'm willing to show up and receive and um, yeah, show up and be there and um, gather with community and uh, yeah, for well-being and for welcoming in the new and for sharing and yeah, giving, receiving. So um, she sent me a text last night and she says, I'm looking forward to seeing you. And there, um, then there was another text about what is a Native American gift ceremony. And there is a little description about that, about how um, Sometimes, yeah, they would have those gift-giving ceremonies where it was a possession of their own that they would pass on or offer to someone else. And it was a gift that was meaningful um, or useful or even a beloved possession. Um, and passing that on, like, as part of, like, generosity and continuity and sharing the gifts that we have, um, yeah. But sometimes, like, yeah, maybe we want to hold on to so it just got me thinking and feeling into like some of those things and I kind of thought about it for a moment and thought oh what do I get to bring and like what's meaningful to me and you know like looking into those things and um yeah one of the first thoughts that I had was oh I have a really pretty amethyst crystal that I could bring and offer because it's it's beautiful and like yeah just it was just like the first thought that came to mind but um, and then I, yeah, I kind of con considered that for a minute before I went and did an errand and came back home. But then actually, like, yeah, I kind of, yeah, thought about some other things. And, but I was like, well, I'll surrender it for now and I'll bring like something, yeah, that's meaningful and that like, it'll just be, yeah, the perfect thing. It really will be, you know. And so just being willing to share and to like open to like, what do I get to share and what do I get to like let go of and release and offer like, yeah. Um, and yeah, looking at the other dream that I had the other night where there was that alligator's head um, that was made out of a beautiful abalone shell or some kind of really like iridescent um, shell. Yeah, some kind and how like I needed to break it open to free the new life. And it was like a small sacrifice. And yeah, I kind of was like looking into those things and those themes and just like, yeah, maybe there, yeah, there is a message. There's a definite potent message in here for me about that, um, all of those things. And just willing to receive them and let them reveal to me how, yeah, what's being offered to me through those gifts, through those dreams, through those messages, um, through those blessings and, um, yeah, remembering what's true and all of that and being willing to let go and make small sacrifices or the, you know, like, and meet my pain and forgive and release and let go of all these things that I no longer need to carry that are no longer in alignment with me and with what I've learned and with where I'm going and with what I'm choosing for me. And um, yeah, so that's been kind of hard this year, letting go, letting go of certain things. But like, really, if I get out of my own way, it's not as painful, you know. Um, and if I'm just willing to trust and to have faith and to ask like for help and for clarity and just, yeah, trust that all is well and I am safe. Yeah. And yeah, remember that and use discernment and focus and be willing to get grounded and like be honest with myself and be willing to make mistakes and to forgive myself for past mistakes and to forgive others. Um, for their seeming, seeming mistakes or um, what I perceived as shortcomings or not enoughness as well, you know, looking at those things um, and seeing through, yeah, 
<laughs> seeing through some of those old stories and lies, myths and lies, to see the truth of, and realize with my real eyes. <laughs> realize with my real eyes. Yeah, all the real eyes. And so, yeah, just playing with that and um, honoring all of that. And so what was interesting to me was this morning and last night how certain things came up about that I've had a couple of relationships um, that I was kind of working through some some stuff with like this year and I'm, I'm feeling some good closure like because there has been a lot released around those relationships that really did help me see certain things that I did need to see um, about where I was expecting where I had expectations of external validation and desires um, that they would care for me in, a, in certain ways, but it was an invitation for me to care for myself and to show up and be loved for me. But yeah, there was there were certain stories and a lot of myths or just a, a lot of baggage I was holding on to around those things because of history, because of certain history, you know, and stories and expectations and hopes and um, and dreams that I had about and and how like yeah some of the history was good like um while you know like the friendship was strong solid and available for me and stuff but then you know there came a period of time or a phase in a cycle where it wasn't and that was like what i couldn't understand in certain ways like the absence of like that relationship or um, yeah, just were, it been outgrown in certain ways and, um, I get to let go of it now, you know, like fully with thanks and gratitude and blessings and appreciation, seeing the real value and the worth and the worthiness and the blessing that it is, was, and has been for me. And yeah, and now I can be released and, and freed to be and it will free the other and it will free me like and um freeing love because love is free you know and um receiving the relationships that are here available to me to cultivate and develop intimacy and to yeah to regenerate like all those things um and grow <laughs> grow and bloom yeah, and receive that fruit. And, uh, yeah, it has all to do, <laughs> yeah, with growth and moving through, um, dissolving old patterns, yeah, and applying uh, the wisdom to this new, true, whole way of operating. And really, yeah, being humble and appreciative, gen genuinely and generously, yeah. And so, yeah, there was a teacher that I um, had who came into my life um, exactly when I needed her. And uh, the relationship was different than any relationship that I had experienced in maybe ever. And so, like, maybe that's why I over-idealized or romanticized this relationship and the image of this friend, you know, that I had because yeah, I never knew anyone like her and I was odd, odd, <laughs> like very um, inspired and admired like her gifts and her energy because yeah, and she shared them so beautifully and um, yeah, and just her own amazing ways. And um, yeah, and so I really have been missing her and um, missing that or what that felt like and I guess yeah what she brought into my life at the time when I really needed it and um yeah that was in 2012 and um yeah for a couple few years um just yeah developing different um connections and relationships um through that medicine community and um through her guidance and her teaching and her through like that friendship that brought so many riches and beauty, so much beauty, so much goodness and so much growth into my life. And so like, um, 
yeah, it was, I kind of had hopes about like reconnecting and um, nourishing that relationship to, yeah, be in her life and for her to, you know, like want to be in mine and stuff. But yeah, after the last couple of years, it just didn't seem like she really was willing or able to like show up for me in the ways that I thought, like, you know, and hoped that she could. And yeah, because just, yeah, it was just time to move on and move through to a new life. And yeah, it's helped me like see a lot of things like where it was an invitation for me to um, show up for me. And so I always like did look at those things. Um, and yeah, I've been able to see like a lot more clearly lately about like what my hopes were and why like it was hard just to let go and um, release her and release like what we had so that, yeah, that could be honored and I could be free to pursue my own path. And yeah, and now, now I can say that like that's the gift that's being offered and given and um, through the choice and the gift of um, forgiveness um, acknowledgement, appreciation, thanks, blessings, and release. Yeah, and so there is a, a little heart on my altar that's made out of serpentine that she had given me a couple years ago and um, when I really needed it and it meant a lot to me. And um, here it is. <laughs> it's actually from Machu Picchu, I think, from Peru. And, um, yeah, I, I thought about, like, the gift-giving, the Native American gift-giving ceremony tonight. And I thought, well, yeah, maybe this is a perfect gift because um, I am genuinely grateful for the gift, the gifts that were given, the gifts, yeah, um, of our friendship, the gifts um, of learning and growing and healing and connecting with the sacred feminine and um, shamanic healing and the plants and the wisdom that she shared with me and the love that she shared with me and her herself and her gifts that she shared with me and um yeah I, I felt like this would be a beautiful demonstration to bless this this stone that i was given and to offer it to someone else to pass it on to someone else um to give for to forgive and to release and to give back in honoring the exchange that was given and appreciating and seeing the worth and the value and yeah really really thankfully yeah with love releasing releasing all of it and uh yeah freeing love to be to be received and letting go of old relationships that, yeah, that, you know, like, that I've outgrown. I've outgrown the need, like, in certain ways to hold on to them. And I'm ready to release them now for them, yeah, to be free and for me to be free and for all to be free. And, yeah, letting go of the expectations and the resentments that I had that I wasn't even aware of because... I wanted someone that I admired and appreciated and loved and respected uh, to, yeah, validate, acknowledge, and appreciate me in certain ways. But like, yeah, that was part of my ego trickery and my attachment to old identities and projections that I wanted the other to hold for me. Or, um, yeah, just like that romanticized... Um, expectation um, projection and like wanting it to be a certain way where it wasn't gonna be that way anymore it wasn't gonna be how it was because things have changed you know and so that's okay like realizing certain things like that and knowing like that's really is okay and that was like is a gift for me um, as it was as it is and and um, as it's been and as it will be and so just, yeah, being able to wish us all well and to, yeah, do that with love, genuine, genuine appreciation and um, forgiveness and like forgiving myself 
and yeah, forgiving her for not showing up in the ways that like I wanted her to, like even though there's nothing to forgive there. And um, yeah, just, just letting go of old expectations because of certain promises that were made in certain ways or certain agreements that were made. But yeah, now I get to let those agreements go and renegotiate like for myself and to say, it's okay. It's okay to release and let go and to bless this and thank this and praise this and, um, and to thank her in my own way too, because I wouldn't have seen certain things if she wouldn't have been a mirror and a reflection for me. And, um, and also, yeah, just everything that was given, of course, like means everything to me. Like, because it brought so much to my life and it enriched my life so much and it, and it introduced me and helped me discover like so many things of, uh, about me and for me and through my being. And like a lot of it was like, I do belong, I do belong here. And it did help me like kind of lift myself up out of some very, very heavy things and some, some painful times in my life. and. I would always go back to what I learned in those couple years with my medicine community and review like certain things that I'd learned and certain things, little nuggets that she had shared that would help me like stay focused and on track and like, and um, be willing to like uh, show up for my work that I was doing and choosing for me and all of we. And so, yeah, I do appreciate that so much. And I, I do want to mourn the loss of, of it, like of the friendship, because I don't think I allowed myself to do that. And that's where probably some of the resentments and the hurt um, that lingered, like these leftovers. Yeah. Um, this leftover pain, you know, like was, so there is still a part of me like that child that still, um, yeah, I was asking for like that mother figure to see me as worthy and enough or like, yeah, maybe she would find enough time, you know, for me. And like, so there was that like, why can't, why am I not important kind of story? What I wish I was important like to you as important as you are to me, you know, like those kinds of things. And I wish you were available for me. And it is like in a way like continuing, it was a pattern where sometimes I would choose to uh, engage in emotion, emotional relationships or <laughs> in relationships with people who were, who were not emotionally available for me. And that was a way of protecting myself. Uh, yeah, because of my fear of intimacy. So like choosing certain relationships and friendships where they eventually would try and keep, you know, or just keep me at arm's length. Um, and I realized, yeah, that was like why I was playing into it because there was a payoff there, like, and I could avoid my own intimacy or, and, and focus on the lack and then it would recreate the same thing. And so, yeah, like because of lack of time or lack of room or lack of space or lack of trust or, um, yeah, something like that, that was me getting in my own way of what I really wanted and what I really needed. And that was like the fear and the anxiety of being seen, but really wanting to be seen. But yeah, it's just silly, you know, like silly beings being silly and fooling ourselves. Like, yeah, but being able to see now <laughs> more clearly uh, the truth, like within those myths and stories. Yeah, the truth that hides inside the lie sometimes, yeah. And, and also sometimes there's lies within those truths as well that hide. And so it's, yeah, it's pretty funny that way. And that's why discernment comes in handy and also like letting go and being willing and observing and just having faith and trust, drawing on our inner strength um, to move through and navigate, you know, through some of those stories and some of that pain and that shame and suffering and yeah, all those ways through all those ways. And so, yeah, that's what I've been getting and receiving and being willing to open to uh, meeting that pain and, and mourning that loss and thanking really 
meeting it with love and being willing to release it with love and um, yeah letting go of blame and um, resentment um, for that true honoring of that connection and that lesson and that blessing and opportunity and so thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you I thank you I praise you I bless you I celebrate and honor all we've shared and I release you I forgive you I forgive me and I release us both to be free on our um, yeah through our lives and on our journeys and so yeah many blessings be well here's to your health and so be well yeah and farewell farewell love you always but farewell you know like yeah and that feels good and that feels free and that feels right so I'll let it be I'm willing There's a few things, yeah, that I want. I did want to share um, something that I found last year that really helped, and it was also like a great way to welcome in the new year and to say goodbye and release some of the old that was ready to be released. And so, um, I, I would like to share it. I thought, found it was like very awesome little practice. But I just opened up oh this page to this old dream that I shared the other day. That's funny. Um, to show up and do my best, breathe, pause, receive, respond, and trust that love is offering something, everything, always, always. Cooperation and challenges, growing, learning, and playing, stretching, opening, personal, impersonal patterns at play, personal power, responsibility, integrity, mastering personal energy and being the love being true being love that i need for me being one with me yeah how awesome is that and, but uh yeah here's this little thing um, to release and it's a ritual that you can do on your own or you can take it and make it your own and I think um, I adapted it from I can't remember it was, it was like a page on Facebook uh, that some someone had shared and yeah it was a women's group and I can't remember exactly where I found it but I'll share like a little bit with you and it says create some space and light some candles Focus, breathe, and center. Focus, ground, be present. Now notice the stuck energy or old patterns in your body and breathe deeply. Move into that part of your body where that stuckness or old stagnant energy is held. And just like be willing to be aware of that. Where does there feel like there's a stuckness or old stagnant energy being held? So maybe there are old patterns from the last 10 years. Where is it? Where is it hanging out? What are the sensations that you notice? How do you feel? Like describe your feelings, describe how it feels. So journal, explore and visualize and just move your mind there. If you were to imagine an image that best represents this old wound or stuck pattern, what image is it that emerges? To symbolize that for you yeah so what image or words or shapes or colors or feelings can you describe those use your imagination and your senses and your intuition your inner sight your insight what do you feel this image represents and what does your soul need regarding this energy in you what would the symbol or the image say to you what do you need? Are you ready to release it? Or are you ready to draw on it as a resource? Use it as a resource. Are you ready to claim it, reclaim it, and integrate this aspect, power, or choice? This gift. Ask your body and your soul how she would like to release this old patterned energy. Feel free to call in the elements, the directions, the guides, your guides, angels, allies, totems, helpers, ancestors, and loved ones. What energy are you needing to fill yourself with and offer received gift to yourself? 
having removed and released this old energy and pattern. So fill yourself with golden radiant light and feel how light and alive and free you are. So I thought that was great, a great little um, exercise um, to choose and to receive and offer so that we can release and be freed from the old stuff we no longer need to carry and like and bless that and move on and make the space for the new um, to be expressed, embodied, and come through. And so there's this little um, thing that I wrote on the side, on the margin of the page that says, I'm sorry I didn't know how to be with you, but I am willing to learn how to now. I honor your power, I thank you, I welcome you, I bless you, I praise you, and I honor you now. Let us be escorted back into the light of love and universal consciousness. Um, let us be, yeah, unified. Let us harmonize. And be one. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, nice little thing to remember and to like practice. And this is similar that I grabbed today. I just saw this little thing on my bookshelf today. I'm sorry I didn't know how to be with you. Please forgive me. I welcome you, I love you, and I thank you. These unclaimed or denied or rejected aspects of ourselves that we get to meet and recognize. Yeah. I'm sorry I didn't know how to be with you. Please forgive me. Yeah, I love you, I'm sorry, and I thank you. I love you, I honor your power. Let me escort you back into the light. Welcome home. Yeah. And so it is. <laughs> yeah, grateful for those reminders and um, for those gifts that we give back. Yeah. Through forgiveness, through acknowledgement, through recept reception and receptivity, through a willingness to let go, release, and be free to honor like our energy and our love fully. And so I just want to share one more thing. And um, it's the nine noble virtues of um, Yule and, or like that are practiced or that are focused on like in, during certain days of um, the 12 days. And yeah, I really enjoyed like playing with them last year and I'll just want to share like what I have written down here before I close and I say happy new year and yeah thanks for being here and um, good luck and well wishes and good cheer um, for all you want to create this year and this new year and this new cycle and this new season of growth in our lives and this new um, yeah this new path um, on our journeys that we get to take and realize and, and claim for ourselves. So the nine noble virtues. First I have written down courage. I face my fear and defend my family and kindred from all dangers. Discipline. I do what is necessary and right of my own accord without bribe or threat. Fidelity. I am true to my family, friends, and kindred to those I pledge my service. Honor. I stand by my oaths and I honor my ancestors by keeping my name pure among my kindred. Hospitality. I share hearth, food, drink with my friends, my kindred, and the weary travelers at my door. Hospitality. Industriousness. I take joy in labor and I hold nothing back in the work I have pledged to do. Perseverance. I press on against all odds until my goal is met and the task is finished. Yeah. It's like perseverance and endurance. <laughs> Self-reliance. I learn skills and I grow strong so that I may earn my way in the world and be of no burden to others. Truth. I seek the truth even though it may be a hard truth. I speak true words or I stand in silence. I defend the truth from those who do not honor it. Yeah. And so, yeah, those were just like some summarizations of what, what some of those values or virtues meant um, 
yeah, to uh, the people who um, are from the Norse and Germanic traditions and all that. And um, yeah, they needed they need their community and they needed everyone to show up and participate and contribute because to survive because of the harsh conditions. And yeah, it, it was, yeah, kind of a hard way of life and a hard way of living. And, but like all together they were stronger and like through their connections, yeah. Yeah, they had strength and, and um, they get to share like prosperity together. But yeah, like we needed to live by certain codes and um, oaths and all of that to honor like yeah the energy and to make sure yeah that they had what they needed through like the hard winters and things and yes and uh, during those times of famine or barrenness and yeah um, yeah during that time of death and like through the winter yeah the end of the growing cycle and um, the beginning of the new, like when it was time to rest and regenerate and all of that. But yeah, a lot of those things, yeah, they needed to, um, yeah, support the social fabric and, um, yeah, the community. So yeah, I think it's interesting, like looking at those things, like where we do have different values and different virtues and different, um, in different communities and different parts of the world and like, yeah. Which kind of reminds me of something that Joseph Campbell said about like them um, throughout history we can tell where the virtues or like what's what is most valued by um, the largest buildings like yeah and in certain times like sometimes the largest buildings were churches and cathedrals and then in other times uh, yeah the largest buildings would be like yeah those um, the banks or like, yeah, the uh, high rises and um, yeah, what do those represent? Like materialism or like um, some kind of power? Like, yeah. So it's kind of interesting, like, yeah, what we value and what we appreciate and what where we put our energy or like maybe what we agree to or what we unconsciously have agreed to. And is it time to renegotiate those agreements or to, um, break them, honor, honor what they have taught us so that we can forgive and release them and we can um, welcome in a new way or ask to see a new way um, to create new ways that are in alignment with who we really are and with what we really value and appreciate and with our own integrity, like we own our own integrity of our hearts and of who we really are, like our fullness and our wholeness and all the love we are. So, yeah, just some good food for thought and some things to contemplate there. And, um, yeah, so happy new year and happy new beginnings and blessing and releasing and mourning the endings and forgiving and giving back and uh, making the space to receive and to welcome in the new and, um, and honor what's really true being willing to see what's true and uh, surrender and work with it and ask for help, ask for what we need and be willing to heal and be well. And like, let's, are we choosing that wellness for ourselves and are we wishing others well and are we wishing ourselves well? And can we, how can we support that and show up for that and contribute to that? And um, where can we redirect our energy in, um, more aligned ways with and through those intentions and those well wishes and all of that. And so, yeah, thanks for listening. And I hope you're having a, a happy new day and here's to 2021 and what all we can create on our own individual and our collective journeys. And uh, let us be well and let us be loved for our whole selves. All right. Love you all. Be well. Farewell for now. Ciao.